a Roman, and a funeral. In this story, it refers to a centurion. In the New Testament, there are only four centurions mentioned, and all four were considered compassionate men. In this story, there are several interesting things to note about this centurion. First of all, uh, the fact that the, that the centurion and the Jewish people got along so well. In general, Jews hated Romans, and yet they were willing to go and to represent him to Jesus and convince him to come back and refer to this man as a good man, someone who loved their nation. On the opposite side, Romans usually only tolerated the Jewish people. And here's a man who had done wonderful things for the Jewish people, even building a synagogue for them. This was a, a unique relationship between this centurion. By the way, the centurion means that he was over 100 men. He was a Roman officer. The other thing about this man is his kindness towards his servant. That is not as unusual as you might think. It was true that a slave in the Roman system was literally nothing but property. The, the Romans, this man right here, could have killed his servant and that would have been legal and it, it was okay in, in that system. Yet generally, it was a quality that was admired by the Roman people if you were kind to your uh, slaves, if you treated them with kindness and was concerned. It was so much the case that slaves in the Roman system uh, actually became a, uh, like an occupation. Uh, slaves could become doctors and attorneys and accountants and teachers. Uh, they were generally treated well. But in this case, this centurion was willing to send a message to Jesus which says, beg him to come. He was willing to humble himself for this slave of his. But Jesus says of this man, I have not seen so great a faith, not in all of Israel. Quite a statement. People of Israel had a background. They had the teachings of, of the Old Testament. This Roman didn't. He had no background and yet such great faith. There are two times in this story when Jesus could have become unclean. Now to become unclean for a rabbi, which meant that, that for seven days they were not allowed to go to the synagogue, that they could not perform any religious services, uh, twice that almost happened. First of all, the centurion asked him to come to his house to heal his servant. If Jesus had actually gone there in the Jewish system, he would have been unclean for seven days. I believe that's why the Roman said, I'm not worthy for you to do that for me or my servant. Just say the word. Stay outside the house. It wasn't that he didn't want to give hospitality here to Jesus. No, he, he would have done that, but he didn't want Jesus to become unclean. That's what I believe. The second one is with the second story. When Jesus walks up and touches this, this stretcher, this open coffin, if a rabbi touched a dead person or a coffin, they were unclean. The question is, the young man, as soon as he touched it and Jesus said the words, he wasn't dead anymore. <laughs> I think generally that's what the people thought as well. In that story, the, it says that Jesus saw the dire situation that the, that, the, that the widow was in, and she was. Her husband had died. Now her only son had died. That meant that she had no source of revenue, no source of support. It meant that possibly relatives could show pity upon her and, 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 and give her some scraps, 
but more than likely she would have to go to begging. In some situations, they even went into, went into prostitution. They were forced into it. This woman was, I mean, sure, she had lost her, her son, but when Jesus, when it said that Jesus saw her, her dire situation, he, he wasn't referring to the fact that she was mourning the death of her son. No, no. This was a, in this society, she was in dire straits. Uh, the city of Nain. Little bit of background here. Name sits on the side of a hill, a mountain. Uh, on the other side is where Shunem was at. Now, in the Old Testament, Shunem is where, where Elisha came and raised a young man from the dead. Uh, the people of Shunem, uh, this was a part of their history. That was in the Old Testament. Now we come to the New Testament. Shunem was no more. The people actually went to the other side of the hill to name. So th this was the same people group. Th this was basically the same people hundred years later, hundreds of years later. So when Jesus raises this young man from the dead, it says the people glorified God. In essence, they were saying he has once again, sent a great prophet to be among us. They are remembering what happened before. I mean, think about it. The young man that was raised from the dead here, he was telling his great-grandchildren about the whole thing. The, the, the stories had gone down from, from one generation to another. And now Jesus comes and does it again. By the way, only seven people are raised from the dead besides Jesus. Two of them happened right here. Amazing. No wonder they praise God for what had happened. As far as the geography, um, uh, Indor is right next to here. I mean, here. The, uh, uh, Shunem is on this side, and over that same mountain, right next to it is Indor, where King Saul went to the witch of Indor. Well, that's just right next door. Uh, actually, at that point, the Philistines were camped at Shunem. So Saul had to come around. He, he disguised himself and came around and came across over to Endor in, in the same area. It's also well, where Mount, Mount Tabor is at, or you might say Mount Tabor, where uh, uh, Deborah and Barak defeated the king of Canaan. Well, come back next week when we give you more uh, insights on the story of the week. We'll see you next week.